Hey guys, how you doing? I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the uh, the DNP PhD thing because I do get some emails and I get uh, some comments in regard to it, uh, particularly from people that are either in a program or they're trying to get into an NP program and they're being forced into a DNP. So let's just talk about this just a little bit more. First of all, I commend anybody that wants to go for a terminal degree, whether it's a DNP or a PhD, either one is fine. The only thing you have to ask yourself is the obvious question, why am I doing it and what's it going to do for me? What is this degree going to represent uh, five years or 10 years down the road? And you have to be honest with yourself. If you're thinking about going into, uh, let's say, a tenure track program at a large university, you're probably going to need a PhD. That's something that you need to research. There are programs that will tell you that a DNP is good enough. You may find, though, that it's still going to be difficult to get tenure track uh, versus just a clinical track. And there's some differences there. And, of course, that varies by university as well. But I know that there was a, a, a program that I was teaching adjunct at, and uh, they were both PhDs, the dean and the assistant dean. And they said, you know, why do you want to get your PhD? You have your DNP. That's good enough. Uh, and then I dug a little bit deeper and realized it wasn't going to be a tenure track program if I did come on the faculty. Uh, it would be a different track, not as beneficial. Uh, you don't get the same uh, courtesy of respect uh, amongst the other faculty. I mean, again, you're thinking about it. If you're joining a university, most of the professors in that university are going to have PhDs. You're going to be the odd duck with the DNP. Does it make a difference? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on what you wind up doing. My, my, you know, my feeling is this, is that hedge your bets. If, if academia is where you're going to be, uh, strongly consider the PhD over the DNP. Now, to talk a little bit more about the DNP, first of all, no doctoral degree is going to make you a better provider at the bedside. We've talked about that, but I'm just going to say it again. It just doesn't it doesn't make a difference. You don't gain enough clinical knowledge from either one of these doctoral programs to make you better at the bedside. Now, some people might argue, okay, I can interpret the research better, which in turn uh, improves my patient care. And that might be true. You could make that argument. But overall, you're not going to learn anything more, even in a DNP program. Uh, in my DNP, I learned a few things that I thought were interesting you know, I took a genetics course and, and learned a little bit about that and, you know, a few other science-based courses that were interesting, probably uh, piqued my curiosity and caused me to, to kind of dig a little bit deeper, but it, it didn't really do anything uh, to, to improve my practice. That's the bottom line. So really uh, be thoughtful about it. The unfortunate thing is a lot of people who are getting into NP programs right now are being forced to a DNP, where before it was a master's degree program. And I've had people ask me, well, why is that? Well, of course, you know, your, your nursing bodies, the AACN and uh, all, all these other bodies of nursing are, are making programs more expensive by increasing the amount of credits that it takes to graduate. And in the end, is there a better product? Well, they're going to say that there is. But I think we can all agree you're probably not going to be any better prepared on the day you graduate than somebody who had a master's degree. Um, I mean, listen, for that matter, I had people that I worked with in the very beginning who didn't have any degree at all. They, they went through an RN diploma program like I did, and then they went through an NP diploma program. And back then they were like nine or 10 month programs, but they were intensive. And they came out um, being excellent NPs in what they did. And what they did was a very thin slice of uh, whatever they were trained in. I mean, they were sponsored by a physician, and they were very um, highly trained in, in a small area. And I know that a couple of those folks are still practicing today without a bachelor's degree or a master's or a doctorate or whatever. They're good NPs. Anyway, I just don't want to take the NP, DNP, PhD thing too far because the bottom line is nobody cares. Nobody cares whether you have a doctoral degree. Your patient isn't going to care. 
The staff you work with isn't going to care. The physicians that you work with are definitely not going to care. They might find it interesting. I mean, in general, people might find it interesting that you've pursued a doctoral degree and that you've completed it. Uh, they might have some um, curiosity about that. They might also uh, respect you for, you know, reaching a terminal degree, which I think is reasonable. I think anyone would respect that. But as far as you yourself, don't expect that it's going to somehow change your life or your practice. It, it's not. I mean, if you're a, a great nurse practitioner before your doctorate, you're going to be just as good afterwards, but the doctoral degree isn't going to add more to it. Will it give you options down the road? We've talked about that before. I think it might and it might not. I've always been a believer in if you have the time and if you have the wherewithal, in other words, if you have somebody paying the bill for you to go to back to school and get a doctoral degree, then go for it because all it's going to cost you at that point is your time. And it's not crazy. I mean, getting a DNP is definitely not a crazy thing. A PhD is not that hard. I always thought it was. I always thought a PhD would be this insurmountable thing that I'd never be able to survive because I could not endure writing all of those papers and reading as much as you have to read. But you know, if you're fortunate and you get into a program, particularly if you get into a face-to-face -face program, not this pure online stuff, but a face-to-face -face program, you're going to become so tight with that cohort. You're really going to enjoy yourself because you're all going to be working together to get through it and, and get that PhD done. So I, I'm very anti-online, and, and I've done a little bit of online stuff, and I've taught some online courses. And let's be honest, it sounds good on paper because then you can still work and you can, you know, do it at your leisure. You know, you can take, take your class at two in the morning. It's not the same, though. We all have to be honest. I mean, if you have to go to that length to get your doctoral degree, I think you really need to ask yourself, wh why am I doing this? I mean, do I really need this? And what's this going to benefit me down the road? Um, hopefully you have some clear plan as to why you're doing it. But, uh, but the key is, it's, it's not going to change how others are looking at you. You, you might think that it would. It, it's not going to. Just a little bit of reality there. And I'll tell you, back when I started my DNP program, there was talk about the DNP uh, somehow elevating nurse practitioners up near the level of physicians and that we should be able to take the, the step one and step two exam and I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and all you had to do is look at the curriculum and say, well, there's no way that this is going to prepare me in any way for that. And it, it certainly didn't do nurse practitioners uh, any good by trying to push that narrative back in the day. That, that went away, thankfully. But we just have to be realistic about it. If you're going to get a, a PhD or a DNP, you're going to do it because you like knowledge, you like learning, you like the process of doing it. And there may be a side benefit down the road. It might, uh, it, it might get you into a, a, a situation where you do some research with someone and get your name on a paper if, if that's what you're into. Uh, but that's about it. What I really would like every nurse practitioner and, and everyone else, PAs, paramedics, everyone, is to be the best you can be. Forget about the degrees. Be the best you can be. Learn as much as you can about your craft. Learn as much as you can about patient care, about anatomy, about physiology, pharmacology. Be an expert at those things. And if you become that much of an expert on those areas, you're going to be respected. A lot more than some doctoral degree is going to give you as far as respect amongst your peers and your colleagues, the people that you work with. So... All right, I just needed to get that out there because I know we've been going back and forth about DNP, PhD. I'll tell you, um, I, I really enjoyed my PhD because it was a face-to-face -face program. It was an immersion program, so I went, uh, I went to school for four days, twice a semester, and they were like 10-hour days. And you got so close with your cohort that... It was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we went out to dinner at night and we did all kinds of cool things. 
We uh, stayed in touch as we were writing papers. So uh, the didactic portion was great. Uh, and then, of course, at the end, you're done. You'll never see those people again unless you make the effort because now you're, you know, you're on your own to do your dissertation. And that's where, that's where a lot of people kind of fall off the boat at that point. And uh, there are still some in my cohort that have not defended their dissertation yet. And it's now been, uh, what was it, 2021, so it's been three years. The clock is running. Some of those people uh, might be given a total of seven years to complete it. And I'm afraid some of them might take pretty darn close to those seven years. All right. Um, listen, uh, thanks for listening to me ramble. But I, I just wanted to kind of set it clear that these doctoral degrees, they're fun. They're great. They may advantage you somehow down the road, but uh, they're not going to make you a better provider. Be a good provider by knowing your anatomy, knowing your physiology, knowing your pharmacology, being a good communicator, being a good team player. That's going to make you uh, a respected part of the team. So, all right. Thanks for listening and take care. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.